Well, hi there. This giant spider that is here with me today is not a tarantula. Tarantulas are part of a group of spiders called the megalomorphs, or the primitive spiders. You've maybe seen tarantulas in the past, but you might not have been paying a ton of attention to them. One of the things about, about this group of spiders is they tend to have all their eyes sort of in a big cluster on top of their head, and their fangs fold parallel to one another. They don't cross. This spider is part of the group of spiders called the araneomorphs. And these are what you call the true spiders. They're all spiders, but this is a group also sometimes called the advanced spiders. And, and these are the ones that have eyes sort of all over the place, not just in one big cluster. They've usually got, at least with these guys, two big front-facing eyes and a number of other eyes. Jumping spiders that we've covered before fall into this group. And another thing that you can use to tell them apart, because this in a lot of ways looks like a tarantula, is the fact that their fangs fold sort of pincer style. Instead of parallel, they cross one another so they can grab things with them uh, in a little bit more, uh, I don't know, mechanically simple way. The fangs of all of these spiders are actually modified chelicerae. Spiders fall into a bigger group of arthropods called the chelicerates, and the chelicerates have Claw mouth parts. That's actually what chelicera means. It means claw. And, and that refers to their claw-like mouth parts. A place where I've seen these claw-like mouth parts the easiest was on scorpions. Scorpions have really obvious claw-like mouth parts. And I'm not talking about the big claws on their pedipalps. I'm talking about right in front of their mouth, they got these terrifying little claws. Well, in spiders, those claws are modified into fangs to deliver venom and that stinking rad. Another animal that has these chelicerae, another arthropod in this group, are the daddy long legs that you've maybe seen before. And you've maybe heard that they are the most venomous spiders in the world. And that is entirely true, except for the fact that they aren't spiders. For one thing, they don't have, they've got good chelicerae, but they don't have fangs. And since they have no fangs, they also have no venom. So they're not spiders and they're not venomous, but they are in the world, that part is true. This spider right here, the Hogna wolf spider, this is one of the most hardcore spiders in the entire world. While tarantulas tend to be sort of tactile predators in that they basically wait for something to walk right into them and then they just sort of dive on it, these guys are highly active visual predators, which means they're looking for food and then they run it down, which is super hardcore. As a result, these guys have excellent vision, and they've really got excellent night vision. And like a lot of other animals that have good night vision, they have what are called tapetum in the back of their eyes that reflect light and increase their ability to see at night. And this also manifests itself in the fact that they have eye shine. So if you shine a light on them in the night, it glows back at you, which is stinking rad. And so, sort of like with crocodilians, one of the best ways to find these guys is to just go out at night with a flashlight and look for the little eyes shining back at you. They're just so stinking hardcore. But the question is, is the Hogna wolf spider the best pet spider for you? To help you figure this out, we are going to analyze this giant wolf spider based on our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. When it comes to handleability, we give the Hogna Wolf Spider a score of one out of five. They're just not good for handling. They're not really any more likely to bite you than say a jumping spider, but they're really, really fast. It will almost certainly get away from you if you handle it very often at all, and it will be very difficult to get it back before it finds a place to go where you can't follow. They can also bite if restrained, the venom's not a big deal, but I still wouldn't want to go through it. Plus, you could easily crush the spider, especially if it's running away or biting you. They're just nowhere near as handleable as most New World tarantulas, though they don't tend to kick hair in the same way that New World tarantulas will. And that said, they're also nowhere near as boring to watch as most New World tarantulas, because these guys are active and ridiculously hardcore. I'd like to say thank you to our patrons at Patreon who have made so much possible for us, including the macro lenses that allowed us to get these ridiculous 
up close shots of this Hogna Wolf spider for you today. I love these guys, but because they're not very handleable, it's hard to get a look at them this good and isn't it amazing? So thank you, Patreon, for doing this for us. When it comes to care, we give the Hogna Wolf Spider a score of 5 out of 5. These are honestly about as easy to keep as a pet can be. They're a ground dweller that may occasionally burrow. This isn't actually set up to be a proper enclosure for one, but something this size is pretty reasonable. And, and uh, they, they use a lot of space uh, on, on the ground level. They can burrow a little bit, but they don't need a whole lot of vertical space. Makes them pretty easy. Really, to have a good setup for these guys, you just need to give them a lot of ground space. You need to give them food, which is mostly insects, kind of moderately sized insects, considerably smaller than they are, though it is impressive what they can potentially bring down. You just don't want to make it into like a 50-50 when you feed your pets. A lid, which is one of the things lacking on this, is a very good idea. These guys aren't really climbers, but, you know, a lid prevents any escapes from occurring. And water. They're going to need access to water, something we don't have in here because we're only housing this for filming. I'm trying to be really clear about that because all the time, even though I think I said something in our Red Eared Slider video, people are like, that better not be its tank. Well, it wasn't. We're just trying to show it to you. Same thing here. One really nice thing is, uh, like most spiders, you can tell when they're getting hungry because their abdomen will start to shrink. We're actually going to try to feed this one today, so... That'll be pretty exciting. We'll see if it's calm enough for that. I would recommend a substrate like a mixture of sand and eco-earth. Right now I just have sand in here because it's pretty, but put a little eco-earth in there, sort of like we did in our enclosure build video for, for the Crested Gecko tank. And that kind of a mixture would be really great for Hogna Wolf spiders. They're also really good at basically just room temperature. If your house gets really cold, you might need to provide a heat mat, but generally speaking, they're gonna do just fine at temperatures at which you are comfortable. When it comes to hardiness, we give the Hogna Wolf Spider a score of four out of five. Honestly, barring any sort of an accident, they should do really well for you. Babies can be fragile, so if you buy captive bred babies, realize, you know, it's just, baby spiders are tricky, especially when it comes time for them to molt. When, when, they, when they shed their previous exoskeleton, that's a very vulnerable time for them. Sometimes getting the humidity just right is really important so they don't get stuck in there as they try to escape. That's a really common way to lose a baby spider. They also just don't live as long as New World tarantulas, especially female New World tarantulas. These, you know, a, a female hogna might, might live a year or two for you, but you know, it's not like the 20 years that you could potentially get out of a New World Tarantula. When it comes to availability, we give the Hogna Wolf Spider a score of 2 out of 5. They are a little bit hard to find, unless of course you find one yourself. I actually caught my first ever Hogna Wolf Spider on the island of Amantani, which is an island in the middle of Lake Titicaca in Peru. Um, that's a very cold lake, it was a long way from anywhere, and found this giant spider and it was the coolest thing I'd ever seen pretty much. So, you know, I took a picture of it. A couple of years later, here in Utah, I caught a male Hogna carolinensis and I compared the pictures. They were like dead ringers for one another. It was definitely a Hogna wolf spider of some species that I caught there on the island. Looked just like Hogna carolinensis, but I never teed it out or anything. As I mentioned before, the easiest way to find these, if you're going to find them in the wild, is to spotlight them like you would for alligators, which is stinking rad. People also produce them captive bred, which is awesome and super exciting, and that's definitely the way I would recommend. Though, I don't think the environmental impact of catching a wolf spider out of the wild is enormous. This particular Hogna wolf spider comes to us from Animal Ark in Orem, Utah, which is an amazing pet store in that I had my choice of like 10 different Hogna wolf spiders to show you today. They carry all kinds of really rad and unusual things. And honestly, for the last six months or so, they've had various species of Hogna there. And I love them. I've been so excited to show them to you. So here we are. And if you're interested in a Hogna wolf spider yourself, give them a call. I'm sure they'd be willing to ship one to you. They ship all over the continent of the United States. I think I've probably seen them at expos. You probably have to know what you're looking for, but there are some people who are really into invertebrates, usually at reptile expos. Check with them. Online, they do seem to be available. A lot of times they don't tell you what species it is and they're field collected. You know, 
not all hognail wolf spiders are as big as these, but they're all pretty good size. And they're pretty reasonable to buy also. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the hognail wolf spider a score of five out of five. As I mentioned, the spider is not ridiculously expensive. I mean, I've seen them, you know, over $30, you know, sometimes less, but you'd have to buy them online and have them shipped. I don't know how much that would be, but they're not excessively expensive for the spider, especially if you find your own. And the enclosure for them can be very affordable. Something like a 10 gallon aquarium with a sliding lid, I'd recommend, but really any sort of a lid that you can latch down, it's gonna be great. You're gonna need substrate and a small water bowl, but it's not gonna be very expensive. They're gonna be more expensive to set up and probably to buy up front than our jumping spiders or black widows that we've covered previously, but this is still one of the cheapest pets you could possibly have. And that is why we give the Hogna Wolf Spider an overall score of 3.4 out of five. If what you want is something that looks a lot like a tarantula, but is way faster and attacks prey from across the tank like a heat-seeking missile, then the Hogna Wolf Spider might be the perfect pet spider for you. As always, like and subscribe, and we hope to see you real soon. So many eyeballs. Since they have no fangs, they also have no venom. So they're not spiders and they're not venomous, but they are in the world. That part is true. Good. Jason's favorite thing. <laughs> <laughs> Entirely true, except for every part of it, except they live in the world. <laughs> except they do exist. <laughs>